Okay, everybody, this is going to be a very short video, hopefully. I always say that. Uh, on uh, A little bit on kit building, a little bit on the high-powered PEMF. So, as can be seen on the website, if you explore the PEMF uh, website page, it has been updated with uh, some new features, quite significant. Uh, I'm not going to go over them in a lot of detail. What I want to do is show you a packaging uh, technique that I tried and it worked. Um, a couple of things I've discovered from my users. Uh, so I'm going to point that information out that I think um, should be pointed out. All right, this is the original unit. Um, I use this all the time. Um, and those who are familiar with the PEMF, uh, they may have one battery, uh, not battery, one capacitor, or they could possibly have two. Um, all the newer units are going out with much smaller capacitors. These capacitors are too hard to find. They're too expensive. The one capacitor I used before was a $75 capacitor. One component. Um, I can't find them anymore. I got a lot of surplus ones. Uh, they were a new old product. Um, got them off the shelf, never been used. Got a great deal on them, but I, I've run out of that resource. So now I use a much smaller unit. Uh, still 1500 microfarads, definitely 1500 microfarads, uh, rated at 250 volts. Uh, they don't run as cool because you're, you're pushing them a little bit uh, hard, uh, but uh, they're very economical. You can get these things for about 10 bucks. So um, that's a big difference between 10 and uh, 75. So the new unit, this was the, uh, this still is the packaging. Um, uh, the new uh, units have uh, two toggle switches, which I have not mounted in a box yet. Um, I have users who have, but I haven't. Um, okay, so I keep saying the word. Um, we're all familiar with the technique of uh, pl plugging it in right here. This is your main source. And then on the back here is the source for the um, coil. Okay. I'm going to put this aside because I want to bring to your attention something else. So I wanted to try building it in a different box. These boxes, to build one of these, is, and it's one reason why I don't do it anymore, I'll make a complete package, to cut all the cutouts, and drill all the holes. There's a lot of bent holes on this side. There's a lot of bent holes on the other side. Um, the fan on the bottom, something I don't want to forget to talk about. It all takes time. Um, I can't make one of these units uh, package it in a box, get the whole box cut out in anything less than six hours. So, and if I, that's if I don't get distracted and so forth. So I wanted to try something different. I went down to my local dollar store and I picked up a Tupperware lookalike. It's not Tupperware. It's even cheaper than Tupperware. Uh, although Tupperware isn't necessarily cheap. And I was able to package the high-powered PEMF in a $1 dollar store box. Um, I would imagine if I went and got um, a Tupperware container, very equivalent, it probably would have cost me 2 bucks, <laughs> maybe $4. Um, but the son of a gun worked. But in the process of building it and packaging it here, I learned a few things. And I'm going to cover those. And this now does have the two additional switches. You can see them here. And it's what they do. They take the six position, these six position uh, knobs, once for speed control and once for time. And they give you um, three times as much of, um, opportunity for dialing. With the switch in the middle, it's a three position switch. With the switch in the middle position, it's just like the original units over here. Um, their speed is 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 30. Uh, um, excuse me, I got the, that was the time I was talking about. Uh, the speeds are uh, random when it's in position number 1. And if you go to position number 2, it goes to uh, 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz, 4 hertz, 5 hertz is the max you can get out of this. So 1 through 5 hertz, the very first position is random where it would arbitrarily pick uh, a speed and it was done to help eliminate habituation and of course the speed uh, I mean the time here is what I started to talk about this runs for one minute two minute five minute ten minute twenty minute and thirty minute depending on whether it's 
position one through six. Um, position one is always when the arrow is pointing top side straight up 12 o'clock and you have to count because I didn't put stencils on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a cheat sheet on the website and here's a picture of a cheat sheet that's taped right on the, <clears throat> the top. <clears throat> but the cheat sheet now is much more extensive. I posted it. I did a video on it a couple of days ago. So please go back to the website and look at the um, uh, the update with these two new switches. Um, they also it, it cites the speeds and everything else. Okay, a couple of quick points, and I'll show you how this actually worked. A couple of quick points is that on this PEMF, I didn't use the other end of the extension cord where I'm pointing now. I actually have a three uh, prong plug socket. <clears throat> It was just easier to do in this very cheap case. Uh, you can see through it. Maybe you can get a little closer. You can see the 12 volt uh, module. Uh, that's the 12 volt power supply for the fans and to run the Arduino. Let's see. There's the circuit board. That's the bottom of the circuit board. And the top is uh, a little more populated. Can you see through the plastic? Yeah, you can. Good, because I wanted to point out, you can see a fan down there. You can see a fan inside, and you can see a fan right here. So, yeah, that has two fans. And that's the, one of the main things I wanted to point out. Um, it seems that some of the kit builders don't think the fan is that important. The fan is extremely important. Um, the circuit board is designed to cut out. If the SCRs get too hot, they, it shuts down the whole circuit board and the little monitor light will light on totally blue. It blinks at the speed rate that you select, but if there's a temperature over uh, sense going on, if it senses too much uh, heat, it shuts down and it indicates I just shut down by this going solid. And you can reset it, of course, and hit the, the start stop button. And it'll reset it and start it right back up. But as soon as it uh, gets hot again, it will turn that light on. And if you don't have a fan in there, it's got to turn that light on. I guarantee it. So in the original unit, I only had one fan in the bottom. And it blew, blows right on the heat sinks of the um, PMF board. This case was so airy and so roomy inside that putting the fan on the side didn't work. And it wasn't convenient to mount this fan on the bottom of this case or turn this case over upside down and use the cover as the bottom and so forth. Um, it was just one person's idea of how to do a quick um, installation of the PEMF semi kit into a box. And this was quick. It was unbelievable. I did all the cutouts with a soldering iron, acting using it as a soldering knife. I just went in there and Move the soldering around in a circle to cut out the big hole for the fan. I cut the little holes out, the square holes. I had this whole box cut out in less than an hour with all its vent holes. Here's a bunch of vent holes. They look pretty cool, too. Now, uh, you can see the, uh, the burr, burr. I didn't drill any of these. This was all done with a soldering iron acting as a um, cutting knife for plastic. And then here's some more vent holes over on the inside. Um, near the uh, heat resistor that's used to help make the whole thing run. It's fused and everything works just like the original box. But why did I have to put another fan in there? Because I couldn't keep the uh, thermistors cool enough with this one fan just blowing air inside such a large box. So I put a uh, fan right on top of the heat sinks. And now this box runs way cooler than the old ones. Way, way, way cooler. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, a play on words. So I can just plug this guy in. Plug back here. Reaching over. I'm not gonna curl the... Uh... Okay, this guy now is plugged in. Get this, uh, get this out of here. Out of sight. Put it over here. This is now plugged in. I happen to have a coil right here. And here's a, uh, oops. And I'm going to plug it in the front. Turn the power on. And you probably can hear the fans running. You saw the power light go on right here. 
And I have this set for the fastest it will run at full power, which is 7.53 hertz, real close to Shulman's residence. And it will flash, send pulses out to that coil at high powered pulses. Each pulse is the same level at uh, the rate of um, 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 7.53. The new features on speed, you can get it all the way up to 15 uh, flashes, 14.7. 15, uh, it's close, but it's actually 14.7 pulses per second. Uh, but they're not as strong as what I can get out of here when I run it slower. Um, just wasn't enough time to get the cat fully charged if I was going to try to hit 15 um, pulses per second. But it can still be very effective. A previous video shows the chart and explains exactly what the speeds are and the power. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to start this. You can see the uh, coil over here. I put a uh, LED on a coil so I could prove or show. I'm going to put it in the center of this big bad boy here, right here, and I'm just going to press the start button. And you can see that thing flashing in the back. It's flashing at random. I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to go to, I believe, the real 7.53. Oh, yeah. And you can hear the coil, too. Um, there's a metal support bar on here, and it's sucking that metal support bar, and that's the, the clunking you hear. But you can also see the LED. Um, if I can point to it right there, flashing away. Um, it's out of sync. It, it, it's, it's flashing just like this one here. It, it's flashing very steadily at 7.53. It doesn't look it. It's just because the camera can't sync up properly. Uh, the flashing rate and the camera scan rate are automatic match. They don't, uh, they're not consistent. So this was an example of how I packaged real quickly. Uh, what was real quickly? About three hours. Putting all the parts in there, cutting it out, and so forth. Much better than six to ten hours. I have spent a long time. Um, it's an alternative. I won't do it in the dollar store um, Tupperware lookalike again. Next time I'm going to get real Tupperware. They're much better uh, material. And I'll, I'll, I'll build another one like that. I really like the way this came out. Uh, looks sort of cool. So you can see inside. You can see the lights flashing inside, too. Um, so I wanted to print, present this to everybody. I wanted to explain about the caps. And why am I using a smaller cap and not using the, the $75 cap that I used in the first uh, units that went out the door? I don't have any more. And I can't get those caps for 10 bucks. So uh, that would add uh, a great deal of expense if I pass that price on by going up and buying $75 caps. By the way, those caps can be found um, as expensive as 150 twice that price. But my suppliers uh, can't provide them for any better price than 75 bucks. You might find them for 40 You might find some nice places, but I didn't. Okay, and this works. This works. The lifespan of this small cap is probably maybe uh, 500 to 1,000 hours, maybe a little longer. Could, could be 2,000. The more expensive caps, um, their lifespan is typically two to uh, three or 4,000 hours. And what happens when a cap just doesn't work very well? So you have to replace them. Um, but I think we're a long ways away from that on any of the PMFs that have been out there. I didn't start delivery until late last uh, year. Uh, somewhere around October, November, I started delivering my first units. Then I stopped making uh, full units because I didn't have the time, and I went to just selling the kits. Uh, the demand was too great, and I'm only one guy, and I can't do everything, uh, design and build and so forth. Just didn't have any life, so I stopped making the complete boxes. But I wanted to package my little mod, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time cutting out my box, and I said, I'm going to try this little guy here. And I'm really impressed. Uh, I think if I did it again, I probably uh, could use smaller fans. Uh, one to push the air in and one on top of the heat sink. Uh, but I have 60 millimeter fans and the SCR runs cooler than it ever has. So I, I have a way of uh, monitoring how hot it gets real time. I won't go into that. One last thing I want to show people and that is, is that 
I build my uh, units with a homemade soldering iron uh, kit. Um, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's the equivalent of buying a $100 uh, soldering iron station. Um, I went and bought a $5 uh, light dimmer, put it in a, I have to put mine in a little metal box, kind of mounts in your 2x4s in your wall. Um, that's my little container. Got a cover for uh, 50 cents and bought an extension cord and put the female end, uh, the male end, it goes into the plug in the wall and then it goes runs into your light dimmer. The light dimmer is only four wires inside and they, should, they when you buy them they show you how to put them together. And it, it, this right here, instead of going to a lamp, just goes to a, uh, comes out of the box. Same box, you can see what I'm talking about. Unbelievably beautiful. Works really nice as a, um, a temperature control stand, uh, station. Put a little red dot. I don't know if you can see that, but there is. There's a little red dot that I'm pointing to. And I know about quarter way, tw about 25% of the turn is ideal for soldering the components on my unit. What do I solder them with? Um, I'm actually not going to go give you the link, but I'll give you the name. Um, uh, Celody, that's S-E-A-L-O-D-Y. Um, get my finger out of the way, you can see it. Little $20 beautiful iron, absolutely beautiful. I have one over on my bench. Very nice, uh, good, nice replaceable tips. What a deal. Uh, they give you extra tips. It's a regular kit. Not that cheap stuff. Not the buying those $5 uh, irons out of Walmart or Harbor Freight. These are nice irons. And in combination with this temperature control, makes building these boards a walk in the park. You got yourself over a $100 uh, soldering station for about $25 to $30. This costs $20. And you get solder with it. You get solder wick. Your solder, solder, yeah, solder wick. And a solder sucker, which I have over there. A solder sucker. Can't, can't beat it. So I'm doing all this just to give you a little update on the high-powered PEMF, PEMF, telling you how you can uh, build one um, in a rubber make box. I did this all. I didn't even stencil this. Did this out of my head, and just went boom, boom, boom. Cut holes with the uh, um, an old. That's where I use my tw uh, five dollar uh, Walmart special or Harbor Freight uh, a soldering iron. He used it as a cutting iron for this uh, box. Not messy, no sh shavings all over the place. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling. And my box is still running. You can see it flashing in the back. I mean, it's flashing very solid. And I just do something here. I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to turn the speed all the way up to 15, 14.7. Uh, okay, very 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 you can hear I can hear it but you probably can't because it's running a much weaker pulse but it is there and the light looks like it's on solid now um, and that little tiny LED looks like it's on solid and it's running at 14.7 but it's not as strong as it is when it's running uh, below um, below 8 Hertz and as there's an 8 hertz speed, there's a 10, a 12, and then there's a 14, 7. Those speeds, um, they vary depending on which one you're on uh, with relation to power. And that's documented, and that's on the website. Okay, everybody, enjoy. I hope this video worked for you. Another short one, 20 minutes. Wow. All right, have a nice day.